Hello everyone, I'm Bartolo from Gallery Teachers and uh, here we talk with uh, our members about the business of TEFL, that is teaching English as a foreign language. The topic of today is AI, artificial intelligence. Is it good for us? Is it bad for us? We are going to talk about that with uh, an expert who turned her passion for writing into a profession and now has a company. She hires a lot of writers, but at the same time uses artificial intelligence. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Hunt, CEO of uh, Proof Content. This video is offered to you by GalleryTeachers.com. Check out our website if you want to start a career in teaching English. While uh, emailing each other, I did some research and you're working with uh, AI. I still have to make up my mind on uh, artificial intelligence for writing. The thing to remember is it's not really, at the moment anyway, it's not something to be scared of and it's not something that's stealing our jobs. It's a really good tool to help us do all the boring bits around writing that we don't perhaps want to do. But actually, AI can't do the creative stuff. It can't understand how your audience thinks. It can't understand what their pain points are and how to how best to get the right words across to them. It can't do any of that creative process, but it can help you with the kind of what we use it for mainly is kind of writing product pages or category pages where they're sort of the same thing over and over again. Um, and then that frees up our writers and the client's budget to focus on the more interesting and creative content. Um, and then I guess it also helps with the kind of SEO stuff. So I think SEO is sometimes a bit of a dirty word. I, I kind of just think of it as a tool to get your words in front of people, because if you're writing words and they're not there or you've got an amazing product and you can't get your customers there, then you need SEO to kind of put the right people in front of them. And because Google will only give you um, SEO value to your site if your product is relevant to what people are searching for, you have a very engaged audience already. It's not like um, social ads or PPC ads where you can accidentally bid on the wrong thing. People who are coming through SEO are almost definitely going to want your product or be interested in what you're saying. I really like SEO um, and I think it's, it's a really good tool for writers. It's something you should, you know, you should know about as you write. It reminds me of um, a short novel by Roald Dahl that is The Great Grammatizator. Have you ever read it? I haven't read it, um, but I, I'm aware of it. And yeah, it's definitely a predictor of the future. I think that's what's happening today. So the story, more or less, I think it was published in 1983. And uh, the story was about an inventor who made a machine able to write in any style in English. And uh, it impressed me for two reasons. One is because it was published in 1983 and uh, at that time it was science fiction and now it's uh, a very actual topic and the other thing is that Roald Dahl thought that English is a very mathematical language so unlike Italian for example where we have to construct the sentences in uh, a more articulated way there is a way to convert English in uh, mathematic English is more strict maybe because the grammar is uh, easier compared to Latin languages. Are you using artificial intelligence for your writing? Is this something that you recommend or what are your thoughts about this? When I speak to writers, a lot of the time they get very worried about how AI is going to affect their job. I think the thing to say is it's coming anyway. So we might as well embrace it and use it to make us better writers. And I think we need to take the ego out of it and think if I have a tool that can make my content better for my clients or whoever I'm writing for, then I need to use that tool and I need to understand that tool and learn how to use it. We can spend our time being worried that our jobs are going to be stolen, but actually it's coming. So <laughs> I don't think our jobs are going to be stolen, at least not in my lifetime. We've used GPT-3 a lot, which is the one developed by OpenAI and seems to be the one that all the kind of big companies use. And I think Microsoft just brought something out about it as well. It is a really good tool. It can't, it's not creative. It can't understand your audience. It can't understand what they want to hear. It can't know the best words to use for your audience. It can't do any of that stuff. There are some tools that kind of help with tone of voice and things, but the best thing for me is that it, I hate starting with a blank page and it's such a good way to make sure that you don't have to do that. So copysmiths.ai is a very good one. And Jarvis is a very good one as well. And they do all sorts of things. So they can help you come up with blog post titles, help you start writing the blog post, they write the introductory paragraph. It's not always amazing. And it's definitely not as good as um, complete human content, but it gives you a starting point. And then there are things we do that are pretty much just written by AI for our clients. We've just written over a thousand merchant pages for an affiliate uh, site who's one of our clients. And AI has just written all of those. So it's just written like a couple of sentences about each one. 
And it just means that page isn't empty, uh, which increases conversion. And then hopefully Google will pick up a little bit of text on the page. We'll see how that goes. It's very much a test at the moment and we'll see. But I think if you're working with startups or companies with small budgets, that's a really good option and a really good way to help them plug that gap just while they kind of get more money. And then I guess the plan with this one is that we will see which pages work best and then we will populate them with a lot more content written by humans in their tone of voice well for the brand. There are loads of things it can do and it can get rid of all the boring research phase. It can help you show you how well your content's doing in search engines. I guess arguably Google's um, algorithm is AI. And so if you've got AI writing to AI, I guess that probably is going to make more sense for it than something that's written by a human. It's just something to embrace and it's really cool. Um, all the different things you can do with it, but there's nothing to be worried about. There's no, it's not replacing the job of writers really. So how does it work exactly? How can we tell uh, a computer, uh, yeah, I want an article about teaching English, go ahead. Yeah, so I don't know how um, how all the technology behind it works because we I don't build the AI and I'm no um, coder or anything. But we, so GPT-3, you can log in to the um, website and then you just pay for tokens. And every time you send it a request, you, you kind of buy a token or a few tokens. And then it kind of writes stuff. So it's got a Q and A function. It's got a, it's got, it's got all sorts of things. It can tell you a horror story. It can, um, what are the other things? It's got a sassy chatbot, which is quite rude to you. It's got, it's got loads of different things that it can do. But I think the main value is in how you train it. So you need to train it with a lot of content to show it what, how something should be written. At the moment, GPT-3 is trained by the whole internet. So you don't really want like all that absolute rubbish on forums or whatever to be feeding into your content. I think the training models are really important and the way you edit it and the way you set it up are really important. And then that's why using a, a service like Copysmith or Jarvis are really helpful because they have only done all the training for you. We are actually using AI, so even uh, without knowing it. For example, I use Grammarly and uh, Grammarly corrects me. They don't just correct my grammar, they also correct the philosophy behind my writing. Another tool that we are using, and it's AI without knowing it, it's uh, Google Translate. We have some uh, questions from uh, our members. We have a forum and uh, we asked our members to write their questions for you and I selected a few. Are there any writing opportunities for teachers? I think there are always writing opportunities for good writers who understand a topic about one of our clients' products. Every company really should have a freelance writer. So, so yeah, I think there are, there are definitely opportunities everywhere. It's amazing how many freelance writers can't actually write that well. So if you can write really well, there's always going to be opportunities. But copywriting, which is not exactly writing. You disagree with me? I disagree. Okay. Um, but <laughs> but so, I think that's probably just semantic. I mean, it's copywriting. You're writing. <laughs> You're writing copy. But it's uh, the purpose of uh, copywriting is uh, sales, while uh, writing is uh, is not. The purpose of copywriting is sometimes sales, is sometimes engagement, sometimes brand building. So I think it, it's different things, I guess. You need to have other skills in order to be a good copywriter. So not just writing well, but you need to have a preparation, also a technical preparation that uh, an academic teacher might not know anything about SEO or WordPress, while a copywriter needs to have these skills plus other skills. I think if you understand the topic, then when we create the brief, you can be fine just being a good writer. With writing, just understanding spelling and grammar and syntax and how something should be laid out is not being a good writer. It's having the creativity and knowing how to get your point across to an audience and understanding that audience. Those are the most important parts of writing and those are the most important parts of copywriting as well. Is it still worth blogging, personal blogs? Personal blogs, um, yeah. I think there's not as much space for them as there was before um, because people tend to like these shorter snippets on social media. If you have a following on social, I would get them off and get them onto your blog because you don't own your audience on social media. Like the algorithm could change and punish you or your account could be deleted for something you haven't really done. So I would say a blog is pretty important. Is there anything else that you want to discuss? Um, not really. I guess we're just always looking for good writers. So if you are interested, then you can go to proofcontent.com, P-R-O-O-F content.com. And then if you fill in the get in touch with us form, then I will get back to you.
if people are interested in uh, uh, your services, how can uh, they get in touch with you? Again, you can use our website or you can uh, find me on LinkedIn. I'm on there quite a lot at the moment. So, and you can, if you're, you know, not interested in buying anything at the moment, just follow my LinkedIn post. That would be lovely. And then in terms of the process, I guess we would just have an initial conversation, see if it's right for you, see if we're the right agency. If not, I'll find you. We're in touch with a lot of other content agencies, so we can find you someone else who might be a better fit. And then, yeah, we kind of either we handle the project in-house or we'd find freelancers um, that would be good for the project. And then we'll kind of, you know, handle, we handle all the briefing and all the editing and everything in-house. So you don't have to ever... Um, deal with hundreds of freelancers at a time you just have to deal with us thank you charlie it's been a great pleasure to have you here with us today very good conversation a lot of material and a lot of uh, very inspiring ideas and that's all for today thank you for staying with us i'm bartolo from uh, gary teachers and our very special guest of today is uh, charlie hunt from uh, proof content if you like this video please give us a thumbs up subscribe to our channel if you have something important to say to the TAPO community, you want to write an article for us or you want to get interviewed on this channel, please write that editorial at galleryteachers.com and we will get back to you. That's all for today. Thank you for staying with us. Until the next time, happy teaching and happy learning. <laughs>